All right, so before we look at modifiers, we're going to take a look at the 3D cursor, which is this thing here. Its three main functions are for adding meshes. It'll define where the mesh is placed. As I mentioned earlier, if you go down here and choose 3D cursor, you can use it to select a pivot point for an object's rotation or scale. And most importantly, the 3D cursor is the tool you use to redefine an object's origin or center point. And to do that, you go up to here, search origin, make a button for set origin. With the object selected, you push it, and then origin to 3D cursor, and you can see it moved the orange dot there which is the object's origin. To choose where the cursor is, you can just click. If you hit N, scroll down, here are the cursor's coordinates. Shift S will bring up its snapping feature, so cursor to center will take it to center. If you go into edit mode here, select a vertex, shift S, cursor to selected, that'll place it there. The 3D cursor used to be used to center the viewport on a component, but now all you need to do is select one in edit mode and hit period on the numpad and it'll center it on it. Okay, so the first modifier we're gonna look at is the mirror modifier. So if you go to the wrench here, Add modifier mirror, that'll bring up these options. Now all modifiers are non-destructive, so at any point you could change any of these options, change the order in which the modifiers are applied, or go to this X and close it. Now modifiers think in terms of object mode. So here you see if I go to mirror it on the Y axis, which is the green, and pull this to the side in object mode, I'm also moving the origin, so nothing happens. Now if I undo that and go into edit mode and pull it to the side, the origin stays in the same place, and now it's mirrored across. Another thing to consider is that modifiers think in terms of the local axis. So if I go to local here, you see right now it's still aligned with the global axis. But if I go back to object mode and rotate this, I've changed the axis on which I'm mirroring it. If I undo that and do that same rotation in edit mode, you can see my local axis didn't change, so it's mirroring across the same global axis. If at any point in object mode I wanted to apply my local axis and convert it back to the global axis, I can do control A, and in this case, apply rotation, and you can see my local axis is now the same as the global. All right, so when mirroring, if you want to merge the vertices in the center, all you do is just turn on clipping here, and when you move it together, you'll see that the entire center line is now merged. And then something to consider for all the rest of the modifiers are these four buttons here mainly these three. This one will render with the modifier on or off. This one will basically preview it for you, and then this one will allow you to edit it in its final modified state, such as this. The most common one is just to toggle this last one on and off, depending on what you're trying to do. All right, so moving on to subdivision surface, if you go to add modifier again, subdivision surface, it'll put it below the mirror. You could move it above or below. In this case, we want it below. You can choose between Camel, Clark, and Simple Subdivision. View determines viewport subdivisions. Render will determine how many times it's subdivided when you render. If you push N to bring up transform window, with an edge selected, you'll see this crease function, which is for subdivision surfaces. You can do it partially or full, and it basically just spares you adding all these edge loops for hard surface modeling. So to demonstrate how it's non-destructive, I could at any point remove this and it goes back to normal. Or if instead I wanted to apply it, I just go to object mode, apply. Now when I go back to edit mode, you see the subdivision is now applied. All right, so now we're going to go over smoothing groups. So uh, if you go into edit mode, select all, scroll down, you can choose between smooth and flat shading here. So you want smooth, go to modifiers, add new, edge split. So if you tab into object mode, you can see here it's created different smoothing groups. The angle is set here, so it's automatically anything sharper than a 30 degree angle, creating separate smoothing groups. You can see that here or here. You can take this angle up or down to get different results. And if you wanted to manually mark an edge as sharp, you just select it, control E, mark sharp, and you see it's created a separate smoothing group. Now again, so long as this is a modifier, I can still go in here and edit everything and it hasn't created smoothing groups yet. It's not until I apply it that if I go back now, you see it's created the different smoothing groups. And if at any point I wanted to cancel applying this or if I imported a model with smoothing groups that I want to now edit, I can just select everything, W, remove doubles, and you see now it's all one mesh again. And if you're ever getting any shading problems from flip normals, just hit N to bring this up, scroll down, and draw face normals. And now go to your normals options here and say you had two that were flip direction. The fastest way to solve this is select everything, control N, and that'll attempt to recalculate all the normals outside, which is the same as hitting recalculate right here. And if that doesn't solve the problem, then you can just go through and flip direction manually. All right, so I'm going to go over retopology now. And since Blender 2.5 hasn't re-implemented the retopo features, I just do it using the shrink wrap modifier, which I think works just as well anyway, if not better. So what you want to do is... Make sure you're in object mode when you add a new object. I just uh, unhid this, but I added a cylinder and I moved it to the arm, which is where I want to demonstrate the retopo features. If you want to hop over here to the material section really quick, just add a new one and go to diffuse and just choose a bright color so it makes it easier to see what you're doing. Then go to the wrench here to add modifier, choose shrink wrap. For target, you're just going to choose whichever mesh you're uh, retopologizing. So in this case, mesh 0.06 is that torrent I made for this. And then you tab for edit mode and I'll show you how this works.
Uh, so if you remember, this function here is the one that's going to switch between the edited mesh and then the cage of the mesh. For retopo is honestly the time that I use this the most. Sometimes it's just beneficial to have it in cage and sometimes I like to work more on the top of the mesh. So here you just want to get it as close as possible. And I think I want to work like this. So it's easiest if you unocclude the background and you just start extruding like this. Maybe rotate, extrude, extrude. So then once you have a rough area laid out, the best thing to do is apply this, add modifier again, and just reapply it. And now you see it'll be a lot cleaner as you smooth this. So I can scale this out, smooth, see what it looks like like this, maybe move some points, smooth. And you see it ends up being a pretty fast way of doing this. Something that's really important to think about if you're doing hard surface modeling, a lot of times you just want to cut the polygon count a bit, but you want to use nearest vertex is what I've noticed I use all the time for hard surface modeling because a lot of times I want to match what's underneath pretty precisely. So then here you see it's actually snapping to the vertices underneath of the Torin. You see here, this is where it's snapping to is any one of these vertices. But yeah, other than that, all the same functions work. Control R, add loop, move these around. S, scale, R, rotate, all that good stuff. So you should be able to end up doing this pretty quickly. All right, so that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Next video, I'll go over a curve and array modifier and maybe a few others. Then I'll do UV mapping, uh, materials, maybe sculpting and particles.